uh, the Poon family returned from the Philippines, followed by Brother Alan and uh, Albert, and then uh, the Coronel family who came uh, Wednesday this week. Yeah, And uh, we have brothers and sisters who uh, went uh, on holidaying as well um, uh, locally. So um, back to reality and even children. You're going to be back to the school this week, yeah? So, um, we thank the Lord for the gift of summer. Summer always, to me, um, uh, it gives a chance for uh, refreshing. It gives a chance for renewal, both physically as well and spiritually. Because during summer, um, uh, because the children are out of school, you do not have to uh, wake up too early. You do not have to worry, uh, worry dropping and collecting. That's uh, those um, uh, uh, perks that the summer brings. Amen? But uh, going back, are we blessed that we are in the house of the Lord this afternoon? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! Can you tell the brother and a sister next to you that I am blessed that you are here this afternoon? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And people who are joining us online, we are blessed that you are joining us this afternoon. Amen? Hallelujah. Look around you, church. It appears that uh, there's more vacant uh, chairs today comparing to those previous weeks. So, uh, that in itself is a testament that the word of the Lord is true. Amen? The word of the Lord is true. Hallelujah. Can I ask each and every one of us to stand up and let's welcome the word of the Lord and pray? Matthew chapter 9. I just want us to read this again. Beginning from verse 35 until the end of the chapter 9. The word of the Lord says like this. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, including the town of Aldershot. You know, we talked about last time how God is omnipresent. And God is here with us in this church hall this afternoon. Amen? And the same time, God is around town this afternoon. And let's have a look at what is in the heart of the Lord this afternoon. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, including the town of Aldershot. So Jesus was teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every diseases and sicknesses. And when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Amen. So, if you go around the town of Aldershot, right at this very moment, you can find two types of people. Majority of the people are the harvest and few of the people are harvester roaming around to preach the good news of the Lord. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you very much for bringing us all together in fellowship. Father God, thank you because this was not of our own accord. But thank you so much for the power, for the revelation, and for the conviction of the Holy Spirit bringing our feet at the house of worship, Father God. Indeed, Lord, that in the world, there are a lot of perils. Indeed, Father God, that in the world, if we are to abide by our physical being, there are a lot of activities. There are a lot of things to do in the world. But we thank you so much, Father, because it is not an accident in coincidence that you have brought us in the house of worship this afternoon. So therefore, Father God, we pray that you prepare our heart 
you prepare our mind just as according to the scripture that your servant read earlier that father we ought to come in your presence in your company with all our heart with all our soul with all our strength with all our innermost being therefore father god thank you because we know when we do believe that you are not finished yet we thank you lord because once again, we are going to receive from you, Father God, a word that will quicken our spirit. A word, Father, that will complement our growth in walk with you, in walking with you. We thank you so much, Father. I desire that you continue to hide me behind you. Continue, Father God, to wrap me with the most precious blood of your son, Jesus. That, Father God, these people gathered here today and the people joining us online won't just be mere staring and listening to this person standing in front. But, Father God, let us all consider the word that you have set upon my heart. The word, Father God, that you have set upon my mouth, Father God, in order to bless your people this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Do we believe in the word of the Lord when he says that the harvest is plentiful? Amen. And there are very few laborers. That's why... Our Lord Jesus Christ encourage each and every one of us to pray, to earnestly desire for workers to be sent to the vineyard. Amen, church? How many of us wants workers to be sent in the vineyards? How many of us wants this harvest outside to be brought in? In the kingdom of God. Amen, church? I'm just wondering, where would these workers will come from? Any idea, my dear brothers and sisters? Any idea where will these workers and harvesters will come from? Any idea? Look at one another and tell them that you are God's Co-worker. Is that not our message last week? That you are God's co-workers, my dear brothers and sisters. I agree that, you know, if there is a job employment open and they are in need of engineer, where would they hire? In the pool of engineers, amen? They wouldn't hire somewhere else. And the same thing in the kingdom of God, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord will raise up from among His church, from among His people, workers and worshipers. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, we are here in the church as a training ground. Amen? Although the pulpit of the church is this one, but the pulpit of the kingdom of God is outside, reaching out to those lost, the heart of people. Amen, church. Amen. There is a saying where all of us, I believe, agrees. There is a saying where all of us wants to hear. And that saying is, everyone deserves a second chances. Amen. Amen. And I agree on that. That everyone deserves a second chances. Probably, I believe that everyone deserves not only second chances, even third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so forth, my dear brothers and sisters. I believe that each and every one deserves second chances. Amen. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, when it comes to salvation, 
Second chances is moot. In the kingdom of God, when it comes to salvation, my dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to eternal security, there are no second chances. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says in here, and pay attention, it is appointed for man to die once. And after that is the judgment. Amen? Probably in your younger years, a year ago, a week ago, when you came and attend the service, and you were convicted, and you came to the Lord, and you have backslidden, and you came to the Lord, and you have backslidden, and you came to the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I still count that as your first chance to the Lord. Because the word of the Lord says that while there is life, there is hope. Amen, church. But when we are talking about the judgment of the Lord, when we are talking about your actual salvation, the very salvation, my dear brothers and sisters, there are no second chances. There are no second chances. It is appointed by the Lord for men to die once. And after this death is the judgment. So clearly, my dear brothers and sisters, this word of the Lord, which is infallible, which is inerrant, my dear brothers and sisters, it clearly contradicts the religious belief system which teaches that man is constantly reborn or reincarnation, where man will be constantly rebirth until they vanish in a thin air. Yeah? So if you are an evil person, you keep on reincarnated, and if you become ant, which is what is lower than ant, nothing. So you vanish in thin air. That is the religious belief system of reincarnation. This word of the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters, neither as well contradict the belief of that holding place for the soul who are not good enough to enter the presence of God. Of why, while these souls are being there, that they can be purified with the help of the prayer of the people still living. That is the belief of purgatory. There is no such thing as purgatory in the Bible. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is appointed for you and me and anyone that we know to die once. And after that death is judgment. If you want to ask, oh, why then, Pastor, that the Lord raised Lazarus up from the dead? Why then, Pastor, that Paul raised someone from the dead? Why is it that in the New Testament that people were raised from the dead? We'll talk about that some other time. Or we can talk at the back later on if you're really interested. The message today, my dear brothers and sisters, is between you and me. It is destined for each and every one of us to die once. And after that death is the judgment. Amen? Like what I have said earlier, the Bible is infallible. Infallible, my dear brothers and sisters, meaning the Bible is trustworthy. You can trust the Bible. Infallible, my dear brothers and sisters, means incapable of being wrong. Amen? It is not capable of being wrong. So when the, the Lord says that it is destined 
for ma one man for man to die once and after that judgment there are no multitude of explanation it is what it is my dear brothers and sisters amen the bible is very clear that man will experience single death and once this happens it says in here each person is accountable for their actions in life. Amen. It is destined for one man, for man to die once, and after that, giving out accountability with our Lord. Matthew 12, 36, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, that everyone in the judgment, will give an account of everything that we have done here in earth. We will give an account of every um, H, uh, HCSB, it says in there, with every careless words that we have spoken. In other translation, it says in there, every godless chatter or words that we have spoken. Children, Sister Grace talks about swearing and cursing. But to be honest, my dear brothers and sisters, it is more than that. Every lying tongue, all those times that we lied, it is more than that, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a wake-up call for us, the body of Christ, people of God. Are there still marites in here? No? According to Facebook, marites is uh, not in anymore. T uh, is it? Auntie Linda. <laughs> no, no. Uh, piling. Auntie Piling. <laughs> no, but my dear brothers and sisters, we are learning because later on we will learn that coming to the Lord is more than what this world wants us to believe. This world simplify coming to the, coming to the Lord. This world does not teach people or even the kingdom of darkness does not teach people not to believe in the Lord. They do not teach people not to come to church. They teach a teaching how to believe in the Lord contrary to what the infallible word of the Lord really means for you and me. So my dear brothers and sisters, each man is destined to die once and after that, giving out of accountability of every curse, of every, what's the other word that you said again? Cursing and every um, swearing and every lying and every conversation. That's the reason why that when you become a Christian, you know, you become a Jesus Christ person. That's the reason why that when you become a Christian, you become a brand new creation. Because it is more than what you believe in. It is how we live our life. Amen, church. This is the infallible word of the Lord is telling us, is teaching us. Amen, church. My first thought, if someone died is, do they have the Lord Jesus Christ in their life? If I know, if I heard someone died, secondary to rushing to, especially if you know the family, the person secondary, and rushing to, to message, to reach out to that person and say that, oh, our utmost condolences. 
I cry and I speak to the Lord and say that, Lord, does this departed someone have you in their life? And my dear brothers and sisters, dying without Jesus Christ will lead to a forever eternal separation from God with no second chances of reconciliation. Dying without the Lord Jesus Christ once again will bring you to a place where you are eternally separated from God. And there will be no second chance to be reconciled, my dear brothers and sisters. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9, the judgment is this. Amen. Where is the judgment? In flaming fire. Inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. That is the judgment for every person who did not reconcile with God while they were still alive. And number two, those person who did not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Later on, we will find out that it is of two ways. It is important to acknowledge the Lord, but it is equally important to lead our life in a manner that the Lord prescribed. Amen, church. It is not a secret to each and every one of us. People perishes every moment. People perishes every hour. People perishes every day. And I personally know people by the tens who passed away since the beginning of this year alone. And to be honest, some of these people, my dear brothers and sisters, are commonly known to us. Irene, the father of uh, Brother Alan, Dilano, and so on and so forth, cling. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is not a secret that people perishes every moment. I saw your um, uh, post this morning, um, Sister Bless. Sister Bless said, uh, I don't know, along those lines that when God calls you home, what did you say? You cannot stop it. You cannot delay it. You cannot hold it back along those lines. Yeah? And my dear brothers and sisters, was that not our passage last Sunday when we talk about Psalms chapter 139? And verse 16, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord saw our unformed bodies and all the days of our life were ordained by the Lord. All the days of our life were written in the book of the Lord, even before they came into being. Amen, church. Remember our conversation last time, Chris? You said that, Chris said that, I believe that every single person who is being born, their days are already numbered. And we cannot do anything to change that. What we can only do 
is how we live our life in between. Hallelujah! That's the message of the gospel. Amen, church. People perishes every moment. There is a time for everything and for a season for every activity under the heavens. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, There is a time to be born and there is a time to die. There is a time to be planted here on this earth and there is a time for life to be uprooted out of this earth, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? How about us? How about you, my dear brothers and sisters? Do we know our number years? Does anyone know his or her number years? Does anyone know? Have we decided in our mind, in our thoughts, how long we are going to live? My dear brothers and sisters, the challenge, the conviction here is, how long do we procrastinate in becoming serious with the Lord? We agree that we do not know our number years. Amen? By the grace of God, I am in, uh, Sister Annie, I am in uh, my number 46, okay? Not number 45, I wish. By the grace of God, I am in my number 46. And what assurance do I have that I will still be here on the number 47. I do not know my number years. Because we can agree that we do not know our number years. People are perishing, dying by the moment, by the minute. And because we can agree that we do not know our number years, the challenge to us is this. How, how long do we procrastinate in becoming serious with the Lord? How long will we go on avoiding the Lord? How much time and how many ways do we take the Lord for granted? Earlier this week, me, brother William and sister Ramon were sharing and we shared that, you know, we as a human being, we are the biggest gambler of all times. We know that we cannot win, but yet we keep on gambling. We keep on gambling. We don't know our number years. We don't know the time of our uprooting. And yet, we keep on evading the Lord. And yet, we neglect on becoming serious with the business of the Lord. And yet, we keep on running away from the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, Hanggang kailan natin ipagpapaliban? How long do we procrastinate? Hanggang kailan natin ipagpapaliban ng Panginoon? I will work first. I will secure my future first. I will first enjoy my youth. I can do the Lord's stuff when I am older. Wow, I am very blessed with David and Patricia. They are jumping when they are praising and worshiping the Lord. They're raising their hands. They are kneeling down. I want to be like them when I grow old. But at the moment, I'm going to enjoy the time of my youth. 
I'm going to be lax coming to church. And when I reach their age, that's the time that I'll gonna step on the full throttle. Hanggang kailan po natin ipagpapaliban ng Panginoon? I will go and have a holiday first and enjoy life of enjoy life first and then I will find time for the Lord later on. But my dear brothers and sisters, the wisdom that you received this morning, Sister Daisy, that we don't know our time. In the twinkling of the Lord's eye, in the snap of His fingers, my dear brothers and sisters, you cannot say, wait Lord, I'm going to bury my dead. You cannot say, wait Lord, can I say goodbye to my loved ones first? When that boat calling for you to get in will shut, the door of that boat cannot be opened. That's what happened during the time of Noah. When the time of your uprooting will come, no amount of the church prayer will stop that. When the Lord decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, not even the prayer of the most faithful man on earth made a difference. Abraham interceded with the Lord for the people of Sodom to be spared. My dear brothers and sisters, how long we are going to procrastinate the Lord? You know, if you can tell me that, oh, I received a first-hand revelation from the Lord that I will die on my 90s, then by all means, my advice to you is, yes, you go and squander. Come to the Lord when you are 89. But my dear brothers and sisters, James chapter 4 verses 13 to 14, Come now, we people who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? My dear brothers and sisters, Ask this yourself. What is my life? Ano nga ba talaga ang buhay ko? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Wow. Go out first thing in the morning. It's so misty outside. Go back to collect the bin. Go out to bring it out. The mist is gone. My dear brothers and sisters, things can happen in a twinkling of an eye. Like I've said, sometime June, I have one of our lady friend in the university who is based in France. And on that one Wednesday evening, we were chatting. Because we have a group chat, the university chat, and one Wednesday evening. And he said that, okay, bye-bye, good night. I will log out because I will come out of work, take the bus, go home. Thursday morning, we were shocked by the news by one of our friend that says, she's gone. She's gone. And up until now, I don't know. My hearts and my thoughts for the family, up until now, 
the corpse is not being released. They are still awaiting for the outcome of the um, uh, coroner's report. I don't even know if it is suspicious kind of death or what, but the message in there, my dear brothers and sisters, is in a twinkling of an eye, our dearly departed, sorry to use that example, Dilano. He was on a race in between this lap and that lap. A precious life, a precious soul that the Lord died for and did not matter in between lap. In a lap is, I don't know, raising people, help me. What is one lap? Two minutes? Three minutes? Say that. Yeah, but that one, what lap in uh, between the lap and the next one? Man, that's very sad. But my dear brothers and sisters, This is the reason why that we are talking about this message this afternoon. This is the reason why that we are talking about this message this afternoon. Any person who dies without Jesus Christ will be cut off from eternity. Every man, woman, and we have the discussion last time, children that has come of that age of maturity who does not have the Lord Jesus Christ in their life and they died. That is an eternal separation from the Father. That is going to be an eternity without second chances without second chances of reconciliation. And to be honest, my dear brothers and sisters, having these thoughts, personally, it fuels my commitment in the service and in the ministry. I can be honest with you. I can tell you 101 reasons to quit the ministry. But my dear brothers and sisters, the thoughts of having someone to die without knowing the Lord that will be eternally separated from the Father, that kind of rains your heart to persevere that kind of rains your heart, anchors your will to continue in the service of God. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Tapos mabawasan pa. There's no justice in there, my dear brothers and sisters. Do we believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that the harvest is truly plentiful? Do we believe it? And I'll be very honest and blunt with you. This harvest, this harvest, these people mentioned by the Lord, that plentiful harvest, these are the people mentioned by the Lord. You know when the Lord gave that parable of the wide gate in a narrow gate? This harvest talks about those people who are heading to that wide gate. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction and many people, not many people found it. Many people prefers it. But narrow is the gate. Narrow is the door that leads to life, my dear brothers and sisters. 
And again, not many people, not few people will find it. Few people will stick into it. They have made a conscious effort to stay there. Amen, church. It is not just a case of you are lost and you found the narrow gate. You are lost and without choice you found the wide gate. No, my dear brothers and sisters, whether you are entering the wide gate or the narrow gate, my dear brothers and sisters, it is made out of conscious effort. And when the Lord says that the harvest is plentiful, This includes all these people. Amen. And I encourage us, my dear brothers and sisters, it is our duty. I pray that each and every one of us will have that burden if we think about all these people, these plentiful people, Romans 10.14, it says in there that how can they call on Him in whom they do not believe in? Amen, church. We keep on telling people, oh, these people are unbelievers. Hang on. Have you done your job as a Christian to share the gospel to these unbelievers? Or we are just very good in pointing out how they are an unbeliever. Is that the role of the Christian? To point out how people are unbeliever? Or the role is to bring these unbelievers into the fold? How can these unbelieving people believe in the Lord? If they do not heard about the Lord. Amen, church. How can they hear of the Lord without someone introducing the Lord to them? And how can someone introduce the Lord to them if instead of us going to introduce the Lord, where are there? Hmm, unbelievers. Hmm, it's not, not how those Pharisees acted before. My dear brothers and sisters, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to instill that compassion in our heart. The only reason that you are sitting here right now is because of that compassion of the Holy Spirit. Because of those believers before you who prayed for you. Those believers before you planted a seed on you. My dear brothers and sisters, it is our chance, it is our duty to pay back, to give it back. Amen, church? The Lord Jesus Christ was the firstborn among many believers. And that is the reason why that Apostle Paul says that imitate me as I imitate Christ. Because just as Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many believers, Apostle Paul in the ministry have become the firstborn to his assignment as well, to the Gentile nation. And my dear brothers and sisters, you are sitting here today because the Lord wants you to be the firstborn among groups of brothers and sisters as well. Amen, church. You know, growing up as a young in the Sunday school, I don't know, is that common song here in the, the UK? There is a Sunday school when we were young as... Untold millions are still untold. No. Untold millions are outside the fold. Who will tell them of Jesus' love and the heavenly mansions that is waiting above? Amen. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, this plentiful are these untold millions. These are the untold millions who are yet to come to the fold of the Lord, who are yet to come to the family of God, who are yet to come to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen, church? These untold millions are going to be blunt, my dear brothers and sisters, includes your mom, includes your dad, includes your husband, includes your wife, includes your partners, includes your daughters, your sons, your siblings, your niece, your nephew, your in-laws, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, your community, and everyone else, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Are you not sad? If your loved ones are not here, pray that they are in other churches. If your loved ones are not here, pray, I pray to the Lord that they are in other churches. Because if not, my dear brothers and sisters, this moment alone, my heart is grieving. So like I said, it's good if there is an assurance. that we know their number years. My dear brothers and sisters, andun na ako, yes, nandun na ako, that we enjoy coming together. We enjoy fellowshipping together. We enjoy sharing the things that we have. We enjoy coming together. We enjoy singing and praising and worshiping the Lord together. But my dear brothers and sisters, our main aim, our main goal is to duplicate. Amen, church? Our function, our role as a Christian is more than coming to the church on Sunday, more than preparing for the church on the Sunday, more than praying, more than praising, worshiping the Lord, more than accepting the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior. Our role, my dear brothers and sisters, is to duplicate One day, God, Jesus was walking. He saw this fig tree filled with leaves, seemingly healthy, seemingly um, uh, fruitful. But when Jesus Christ wanted just one single fruit, he was not even pl planning to share to the disciples. He was only asking for one fruit and there is no fruit, my dear brothers and sisters. The parable of the talents, we talked about that last week. As a believer, as a Christian, there is an expectation of the Lord for us to be fruitful. The word of the Lord says, Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it will give you power to be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Our Jerusalem, my dear brothers and sisters, 
is our family. Our Judea and Samaria is our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors. And to the ends of the earth is whoever, anyone that you can come across with. Amen, church. As a believer, as a Christian, that is the reason why that you were called by the Lord to step in the fold in order to equip you and enable you to duplicate. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation. I want us to study this a little bit. This is the great commission. But let us see what is the secret that is embedded here. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Why is it that Jesus Christ gave this commission to each and every Christian? Because the bread and butter of our salvation, the secret of the, our salvation is embedded in this. Go therefore, the Lord says, and make disciples of all the nations. Amen? Christians are commissioned in making disciples. Amen, church? Jesus is not only talking to the ministers, to the pastors, to the teacher, to the evangelist, to the apostles. This is a mandate, a calling to each and every single Christians. Christians are commissioned in making disciples. Amen, church? And by the rule of thumb, you can only make a disciples if you are a disciple. Of course. Amen. You can only make a disciple if you are a disciple. That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that we must first be a disciple. Amen? Amen? It says in there, go and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of age. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a Christian, when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we became a disciple. You cannot separate it. You cannot say that I am a Christian, but I am not a disciple. No. A disciple, my dear brothers and sisters, is the follower of the teacher. Who is our teacher? Jesus Christ. Christian means the follower of Christ. Amen. Amen. So Christian in being a disciple is synonymous. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a Christian, as a disciple, we need to duplicate. We need to make disciples. And these disciples are marked by the baptism received in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. That is why, you know, the first action of a person who accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they will supposed to immediately subscribe to baptism. Amen. Do not wait in two years' time when we go to Israel to be baptized. If you truly are a believer, as received the Lord as a, uh, as a disciple, as a Christian, there in then, there is that desire to receive that baptism. Amen, church. Because that baptism, my dear brothers and sisters, is that public declaration to people, to anyone who wants to know that I am now a believer. That I have changed a master. 
that I now belong to a different kingdom. Amen, church? How can one become a Christian? How can one become a disciple? Romans 10.9 If we believe, if we confess in my, our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our heart that the Lord has raised him up from the dead, at the point that you became disciple, something first will have to happen. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, now you repent. But that moment that just before, before you become a disciple, you become justified. Amen. Before you become a disciple, you are a sinner. Like what I've said last time, every man who is born becomes a sinner. But when you accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you were justified. Your guilt has been declared innocent. Amen, church? That is the principle of justification means where before you are a sinner, because you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus justified you and Jesus said that according to my knowledge, you are innocent. Amen, church? And that's the only time that you become a Christian, a disciple. You cannot be called a Christian and is still bearing the sin of the flesh in nature. Meaning, my dear brothers and sisters, one must be justified in the eyes of God. Amen? No one can be called a Christian without first being justified in the eyes of God. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here, teach them to obey, to observe everything that I have commanded you, the Lord said. So first, there is that process where you become justified to become a Christian. When you are now a Christian, you need to, my dear brothers and sisters, observe all the things that the Lord commanded mankind to do. You know, that is the daily process of sanctification. Sanctification, my dear brothers and sisters, is more than just you become a morally upright person. You know, when ayaw mong magkasala, when you hate sin so much, when whatever it is that you need to do, that you need to make sure that is morally upright, my dear brothers and sisters, when the Lord says that teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you, the Lord is not talking about that moral composition of our life. That is just a small fraction. The Lord there is, uh, taught us a provision in worship. There is a provision in worshiping the Lord. When we say, when the Lord preached that tell people to do everything,